How difficult is it going to be to bridge the gap between President Trump and the Prime Minister and the other G7 leaders on Paris climate change and on free trade, which the President is very clear on. He said he's going to renege on climate change, and he's certainly not a free trader. So I don't have a crystal ball, and uh, I think that it is never wise uh, to make predictions or answer hypotheticals. Uh, having said that, I think that something that is very clear about the G7, and certainly in my experience of the G7 foreign ministers meeting, is this is a really precious opportunity. It's an opportunity where the key Western, and of course Japan as, as a not geographically, but perhaps politically Western country come together, our allies come together, and we're able to have very frank conversations about the most important issues in the world. The real work that we are doing in the run-up to the G7 and at the table is to have those frank conversations, to be open with one another, but also to be looking for common ground. And that is what our officials have been doing in the run-up to this meeting. That's what ministers have been doing in the G7 meetings leading up to today. And there is a lot of common ground to be found. Uh, at the Arctic Council, for example, I think we succeeded in finding some good language around climate change. But, you know, there are clearly some areas where the Canadian position may not be universally embraced. And Canada is always going to be clear. We're always going to be clear at these meetings that climate change is a hugely important issue. It's hugely important for Canadians. and. We are proud to be taking a strong stand at home, a strong stand around the world on this issue. Likewise on trade. Um, Canada believes very strongly in a rules-based international trading order. We're a trading nation and we're always going to stand up for that. Mm -hmm.